December 1st, Daily Video Bible Reading from the Net Bible, Revelation chapter 20 from the New Testament. Then I saw an angel descending from heaven, holding in his hand the key to the abyss and a huge chain. He seized the dragon, the ancient serpent, who is the devil and Satan, and tied him up for a thousand years. The angel then threw him into the abyss and locked and sealed it so that he could not deceive the nations until the 1,000 years were finished. After these things, he must be released for a brief period of time. Then I saw thrones, and seated on them were those who had been given authority to judge. I also saw the souls of those who had been beheaded because of the testimony about Jesus and because of the word of God. These had not worshipped the beast or his image and had refused to receive his mark on their forehead or hand. They came to life and reigned with Christ for a thousand years. The rest of the dead did not come to life until the thousand years were finished. This is the first resurrection. Blessed and holy is the one who takes part in the first resurrection. The second death has no power over them, but they will be priests of God and of Christ, and they will reign with him for a thousand years. Now when the thousand years are finished, Satan will be released from his prison and will go out to deceive the nations at the four corners of the earth, Gog and Magog, to bring them together for the battle. They are as numerous as the grains of sand in the sea. They went up on the broad plain of the earth and encircled the camp of the saints and the beloved city, but fire came down from heaven and devoured them completely. And the devil who deceived them was thrown into the lake of fire and sulfur, where the beast and the false prophets are too, and they will be tormented there day and night forever and ever. Then I saw a large white throne and the one who was seated on it. The earth and the heaven fled from his presence and no place was found for them. And I saw the dead, the great and the small, standing before the throne. Then books were opened, and another book was opened, the book of life. So the dead were judged by what was written in the books according to their deeds. The sea gave up the dead that were in it, and death and Hades gave up the dead that were in them, and each one was judged according to his deeds. Then death and Hades were thrown into the lake of fire, this is the second death, the lake of fire. If anyone's name was not found written in the book of life, that person was thrown into the lake of fire. God, when we first started recording Revelation, I said, part of the reason I don't like Revelation is because the Christian community and the educational community love to argue about end of times. And depending on who you talk to there's three four five different viewpoints that have names attached to them that have to do with end of times and I usually don't like to talk about it because my my true belief God is revelation is put there so that we do know that there's an end of times we do know that you reign sovereign and we do know that there are two people there are people that are called by you and there's people who aren't who will be thrown into the pit of fire and tortured for life which means forever and ever but one of the things I find fascinating about this particular chapter and I'm going to bring up one of those names is a millennialism point of view it believes a lot of things about end of times but one of the things that they believe is that we are currently living in that time uh, where you have subdued Satan um, and at the end of it is when Satan's going to be released. But one of the other things, when, when your son returns, uh, one of the other things that they believe is that when we die, we go to heaven right now. Ah, so I'm guessing some people who are listening to the video right now said, I didn't know that. Um, I find this fascinating that as our faith grows as we learn how to be Christians a lot of things may already be there things that we think we know from maybe growing up in church things that people have told us maybe things we've seen on TV or read in books uh, for good or for bad and if we don't have somebody who disciples us and comes in and does a lot of checks and balances to see 
what that faith looks like. Um, not just our heart change, but the knowledge base as well. Um, there's certain things that can can get caught up in our belief system that we don't realize may not be part of the Bible. Uh, it was kind of funny. I was writing a post today about uh, Daniel, Daniel 5, uh, and saying, check out Daniel 5 to learn where we got the saying, the writing on the wall. Because you wrote on the wall <laughs> in that particular chapter in Daniel 5. And then I went on to talk about how there's a lot of things that we think are in the Bible that we kind of throw around, like this too shall pass and money is the root of all evil and God helps those who help themselves or God works in mysterious ways. And so we have a culture, a church culture, where we have a lot of things that may not be completely true, but they're part of our belief system. I was asked a question the other day by one of my pastors and I told him straight out, I said, I don't know. And he says, you know the, the answer to this question. And I said, well, I, I know enough to answer you. I said, but I don't know enough to answer you completely. And I am so protective of the word of God that I want to get it so right that I would prefer not to answer you at all than get it like three fourths of the way right. And he kind of laughed. He's like, I'm not going to fuss at you for wanting to get God's word right. Um, and so I kind of feel that way uh, about some of these things that we get wrong in our process. I, I realize that as I've grown in my faith, there's a lot of things that I believed were in the Bible and, and actually weren't. And I think this is another one that would surprise people. A millennium belief point of view, end of times theology, uh, that whole idea that when we die, we immediately go to heaven and we're reigning with God in heaven um, is a belief system that kind of feels like it's thrown in with a lot of other belief systems for end of times. I truly wonder how many people who always say, oh, they're up in heaven watching you or, well, at least they went to heaven. At least they're healed now and they're with God. I wonder how many people really truly understand what they're saying. I don't have a problem with people believing that because there's nothing to do to directly prove or disprove. And I know, I know there's people out there who will argue with me, but directly prove or disprove uh, that particular statement. Um, but I wonder if they've truly read the Bible enough to realize that that may not be the case. It talks a lot about the people uh, lying in the dirt in the graves and then being raised up from the graves. And it talks a lot about after this thousand year time um, where some will be raised at the beginning, some will be raised at the end. Um, again, this is why we get all these different viewpoints because God, it's truly kind of murky. <laughs> we don't know exactly how to piece all these things together. We don't know when John's saying these things, if it's, if it's virtual, uh, as in uh, an idea, or if it's exactly, if the days mentioned are exactly a thousand years. We, we don't know. But I do hope that people listening to these recordings at least stop and think the next time they say, oh, well, at least they're in heaven, or at least now there's no pain because they're in heaven, or they're up in heaven and they're playing checkers with Uncle George or whatever. I hope that they truly stop and think that they're making theological statements about what they believe. Um, and again, it's fine if that's what they believe. I, I personally would love to believe that, uh, but based upon what I know in the Bible, I'm going to say it's probably not that. I, I think that comes at a later period uh, when we're raised from the dead, but I digress. See, this is exactly <laughs> what I don't like about Revelation is this whole argument about amongst all these theories, but I do, I do, God, want to ask for you to help guide us, to help guide us in our faith, to make it pure and true and faith-based and knowledge-based. You know, there's a lot of people in this world who have so much knowledge about the Bible and they never put it into practice. So I, I just hope and pray, God, as people listen to these words and as they study them on their own, that it will start to go from what they're seeing on the screen, it will go into their head, and then it will make its way into their heart so that they can act on it. God, help us to be very careful about what we say about you, about your word, about our faith. 
allow us to honor what you have said in the Bible by making sure what we say is truthful and is from you. I pray all this in your son's name, Jesus Christ, my Lord. Amen. Thank you.